Hi everybody and welcome back. It's lovely to have you back as always and today we are talking about things that you should definitely look out for when buying a luxury bag. Just a bag. <laughs> lovelies and welcome back it's fabulous to have you back as always and I just want to say I'm so sorry about the focus on the last video sometimes we just have these technical issues so thanks for sticking with me as I said I got a new lens but today we're having none of that we fixed it all thank god and we're back in action and I just want to say that today we are going to talk about things that you should definitely think about when you are thinking about investing in a luxury bag it's a lot of money so stick around for that so before we go ahead with that I want to say a big shout out to Paula Jeffries hi Paula how are you and the fragrance of today, because we're coming into autumn, I decided to go for something warm and spicy and powdery with a touch of vanilla. And she's a bit woody, she's a bit fruity, she's got bergamot in there. Now, I will say she's very, very spicy. Spicy. If you like a little spice in your life. Oh, yeah, very spicy. This one is a grower, definitely. When I got this fragrance first, I don't know if I liked it that much, to be very honest with you. And now the more I smell it, the top notes, because there's ginger in there, there's pink pepper. Yeah, a lot, a lot of spice. There's green notes in here, if you're not a big green note fan as well. But on the dry down, it's when it becomes woody and warm and vanilla and musk and all those notes. So if you give it a chance, it is very, very strong on the opening, very strong, but a real autumn, warm, woody. There's balsamic and fruity kind of vibes in there as well. There's cardamom, which makes it a bit powdery. Lovely, but maybe don't blind buy it. And actually, just to let you know, one of my subscribers, Mona, said that she bought a fragrance that I loved, which is the Armani Privé, and she didn't like it at all. So it just goes to show. So just be careful if you're dotting out your dough that you like the notes that I suggest. So before we go on, I want to show you something beautiful absolutely beautiful I received and it is from this company called Idil and I'm sure some of you might have seen these on social media and around with a few people but oh my god I couldn't believe when they reached out to me and yes this part of video is sponsored but oh my god wait till you see I just want to show you something if you remember I have worn these these beauties in past videos right they're just little cheapies a lot of you have asked me about those now wait till you see so Idil I love them because they they reached out to me and they're a sustainable company they're lab grown diamonds which is unbelievable because of transparency across the board where the diamonds come from they're ethically sourced the material is ethically sourced they're 14 karat gold so they're fine luxury jewelry the packaging I'm gonna put in some b-roll is to die for the whole process from start to finish when they reached out to me was just incredible I have to say and or Neela and the team were just absolutely fabulous. They just were straight up, pick out something you like. If you like it, talk about it. If you don't, you know, you don't have to, but oh my God, I was just over the moon because just look at the packaging. As I said, the communication was unreal and the delivery, like I literally ordered these the day before yesterday and they arrived this morning. Unbelievable, they come from Antwerp. And Antwerp, as you know, if you do or if you don't know, is known for amazing quality diamonds. So these are a luxury fine jewelry the quality of the diamonds is the color grade is D to G the clarity is VS there's traceable solid gold and they're manufactured with close supervision from the ateliers over there so inside we have look look how it comes like this will just tell you it comes in this little book Look at it. I just think the presentation is stunning. As I said, the box is beautiful. Before that, I just want to show you this little card that it comes with as well. Also, I will have showed you this on some B-roll. Attention to detail, I would say, is impeccable. Lab-grown diamonds, more sustainable diamond. They require little of Earth's energy to grow and have the same clarity and sparkle, which is a win-win. They're solid gold, which is I love. I want to wear my jewellery every single day. I want to wear my jewellery in the shower, in the ocean, wherever. I just want to wear my jewellery. I want to enjoy it. As you know, that's why I love these. I have diamond earrings that I just never wear because they're too fancy. They're too formal. They're not everyday. They're not functional. And with these guys, I just think they're versatile. They're they're definitely revolutionary because I'll tell you how they work. They're modular, which basically means, you know, you can mix and match your items that you get, pieces that you get. Basically pick a base and choose from the menu of add-ons to start building your idyll collection. Less is more. Sustainability, we want to be as clear as our gems, the finest sustainable materials that you can wear forever. And they're a fair price, which I love as well because they cut out the middleman. So there's no massive 
up markings. It's straight markups, straight from manufacturer to consumer with no middleman. So that's where you are getting a great, great deal. And as I said, they're solid 14 karat gold. They're incredible, incredible. Now I just want to show you what's inside here. And they also send me a beautiful note along with the whole package, handwritten, which I just think is an absolutely beautiful touch. It says a lot about the company. And as I said, they're ethical and all the rest of it. So inside you open her up and she opens like so. And if you just see on the front, each box comes with a little saying and a little phrase here as well. It says, can't wait to see these on you. What to do? Everything, I guess. Let lightness fill darkness. Talk to strangers and find friends. Dive under the ocean and gasp to find air. Can't wait to see these on you. Just beautiful little touches. And inside, oh my God, they let me pick out whatever I wanted. And would you just look at these beauties? So, as you can see, I'm gonna try them on for you now in a sec, but as you can see, I picked two pairs of diamond studs, which are bezel set in here. And uh, you can go small, medium, or large in the stud. And I went the large on the stud. And then I went for this Lucia attachment underneath. So these are two separate pieces. They have a pole, as you can see in between, that you can either raise up higher or go down lower. Again, I will show you that in a second. Then they sent me this beautiful Layla piece here, which is like the evil eye, or it's like to keep you safe, I think, with the beautiful, beautiful chains. The chains are stunning in that they come with three different adjustments. They're adjustable chains, they're jump rings. So you have a choker, mid stack, or a looser fit. It's just like so versatile and variety amazing. Like really, really innovative, as I said, just beautiful. Actually, that's why I was showing my other earrings. Like, look, now I have them in diamonds. I can't believe it because earrings and a stack really shouts personality. That's why I love what I have here already. I'm gonna take these out now and I have my date and I have my cartilage and I'm gonna put my little Lucia and my new Adil piercings here and attach one up to the other on the cartilage, which I think looks lovely. But what I love is I've chosen the rose gold and they have little diamonds here and here, which are beautiful. Another little diamond stud here and then the little loop ring to attach it to the other earring. Like it's just really edgy, but elegant. You can just, as I said, wear it every day because they're modular. You can change around your jewelry as much as you change your mood. And just, as I said, sustainably grown. You can just give these as gifts. Can you imagine a Christmas? You can buy single, you can put them in a pair, you could treat yourself if you've got a milestone coming up or you've just reached something at work. They'd be stunning with a power suit. They just scream elegance and I know who I am. Up your ear game, really, really ups your ear game. Shows off your personality and as I said, just make it your own. I think they are just, just stunning. And I'm gonna try them on for you now and I wanted to say thank you to Ideal for reaching out to me and sponsoring this part of the video. And also you can go down below. I will link their Instagram, have a look and I will link their website as well. So that's it and I'm gonna try them on for you. Okay, I'll be back in a sec. Okay guys, so I'm back and I have my beautiful new buddies into my ears. Just look at these beauties. Now my ear's a little bit red because this stubborn little one up here wouldn't come out. So you're not getting the full effect of my Apollo here because I want this chain, even though as you can see, it's attached on the second and third piercing. I want it to stretch up to here. So I'm going to insert a picture because I didn't want to lose any light and I wanted to shoot this video today. I'm going to insert a video when I do get it. I need a bit of help from Katie. I can't do it by myself. So there is my Lucia in, which is just stunning with the bigger diamond. Then I have the smaller petite diamond in with the Apollo which is going to stretch up to my other cartilage up here, which is the reattached one. And I just think that it is going to look stunning with the chain because there's two little diamonds that hang on the Apollo chain as well. I just think it's beautiful. And I got it in the rose gold. I wanted to say that it comes in three different golds as well. Gold, rose gold, and white gold. So you have all that choice. And then on the other ear here, I have my Lucia again. And again, adjust the bar up or down, depending on how low you want these diamonds here or whatever size your earlobe is. I also wanted to show you what it comes with, which it comes with these beautiful little cards and it's like, have some modular fun. So it shows you the different earrings and styles here and then you can just play around which I love to do, as we all know. Have some fun, see what goes with what, mix and match. And I'll definitely be ordering some more of these because I just love them. There's the authenticity card. 
that it comes with, as I said, and also I wanted to show you what else it comes with. Like if that wasn't enough, these pouches, this is the second one. I showed you the first one earlier, which is this beauty. And then it also comes with this little beauty, which is just gorgeous little travel pouch. And inside I got a gorgeous little scrunchie, which I wear them all the time. And also what was inside, oh yeah, it's up here because I was using it to put my earrings in. It's a beautiful little mirror. I'll have to hide this part, it's a mirror, but I'll have to hide it, as I said, because it'll annoy you. And a little hand mirror. So I use that to put my earrings in and I have to say, I am very, very happy with them. I adore them. I wear them every single day. You'll be sick of me looking at, or looking at me in them. And I'm just delighted because I've wanted one of these chains. I've actually seen them on Tamara Kalanick before and I've just said, oh my God, I love them. Now, that's it. Thank you again, Ideal. And my link is down below and use the code and everything else to go with it if you'd like to buy yours. Now, without further ado, moving on to the handbags and what you should do and think about before you buy a luxury handbag, like you should with jewelry or anything else you're spending your money on in life. So the first thing I think, what I've learned over my past few years collecting and buying designer handbags is to prioritize. First of all, obviously to prioritize what kind of a budget you want to spend. Are you gonna go big? Are you gonna go low? Is it just a trend? Is it just... So I would also suggest Seeing in my collection, I have anything from Chanel to Gucci to YSL to Dior, different, all different prices and ranges and whatever, but I would prioritize going for the most expensive bag first. Why are you here, Viv? When I, you were younger, we don't have the means or funds or anything like that. No, but it is better with all the frequent price increases, and they're pretty severe and frequent, as I said, that I think it is better off getting the most expensive, if you can at all get the most expensive item first. Look at the Chanel classic flap in the last couple of years. Somebody could have got it for three, four thousand a couple of years ago. Now it's five, six, seven thousand. Keeps going up and up and up, and it doesn't look like it's going to stop anytime soon so I would recommend that if you can put your money away and have that delayed gratification easier said than done we all know that and I should really you know take my own word on it and take my own advice and uh, yes I think it's a good idea if you can at all build up your funds if you want that Chanel classic flap it's not for everybody it's not a must-have by any means but that is my recommendation to anybody who is going for that bag Number two is your style and do you want to go for the classic or the trendy handbag? Do you want to go for the Chanel classic flap? Or maybe you just want to go for something that's in this year, out the next year, have a bit of frivolous fun. Don't be worrying about the Chanel classic flap and that's what you want to go for. But if you do want to go for that and you are aware of the resale value of your bag, you want to use it as an investment. As we know, they're not all real investments, but some like brands like Chanel do increase and you can hold your money, whereas other brands they don't hold their value like we know Dior doesn't hold its value lots of other brands don't so that is something to definitely take into consideration just literally have a think of what your you know maybe it's not even that serious maybe just gonna have, have a bit of fun that's it but you know what your goals are how you would like to curate from the very start your handbag collection like your ear game like anything else it's just fun like your bracelet stack rather than buying lots and lots of things that just don't work out for you it's fun to think about these things before you start and then you don't make as many mistakes as the rest of us. Number three, what I would say is don't pay full price if you can at all for the handbag. Okay, for Chanel, etc. if you're gonna buy from the store, you're gonna pay full price. If you buy vintage, like I've chatted about before, you might get a good deal, like I got with my red Chanel classic flap, my vintage one. And also, you can get discount codes if you log on to different websites, they have newsletters and things, and also they have sales. You know, you can go onto consignment stores, whether it be Vestier, whether it be Fashion File, there are so many out there. eBay have lots of Japanese sellers, and it's another great way to maybe get a bag for less than full price. Always great to have the patience, hold on, shop around, do your research and reach out to other people who have experience in the game. Number four, I would say just have a consideration of is the brand your style? Is it your everyday kind of, you know, what colors you wear in your wardrobe? Is it gonna work with what you already have in your wardrobe? Do you wear neutrals? There's no point in getting lots of different pops of color. A pop of color is lovely, but even with my red Chanel, I think I've worn it once and I don't wear it because I'm quite a neutral kind of person when it comes to colors. So that you're not gonna get as much wear out of the pop of color. 
some people might disagree. Actually, I had a, a royal kind of a blue bag a while back, a few years actually, and um, I got a lot of use out of it while I was on holiday because I wore it against a lot of white. So it just is a good thing to take into consideration. Just, you know, the functionality, how it's gonna work in your wardrobe. You know, it's very, very different looking at something on TV, on websites, on the internet and all the rest of it, or on somebody else thinking, oh, that's, yeah, it's stunning, it's stunning. But you have to think of the practicalities and the functionalities of how it's going to work for you. Number five, we are going to talk about quality issues. Check the bags if you can at all before you purchase. Because as we know, quality issues are prominent now. They're all over the place. People are talking about them on YouTube videos constantly. Thank God I haven't experienced any as yet touch wood, but I'm sure my turn will come. It's only a numbers game, but I would advise anybody to check the leather, particularly the Chanel, any bag that you're gonna spend a lot of money on, check it. So check the leather, check the stitching, check uh, the inside, the outside, check the sides, check is it even, check is the flap even, things like that and the quality of the bag. You know, there's no scratches, there's no faults on it. Just check, it's worth spending a couple of minutes in the store when you're spending that much money. Moving on, then invest in your bag. What do you mean by that, Viv? Well, now you've got your beauty, you want to invest in her at home, you want to make sure you're storing her right. You want to make sure, like I have the Chanel 19 here, can't wait, brought her out, can't wait to use this one again. I've got so much use out of it, she's just a real throw around. I just love this bag. And inside, since day one, I have an organizer inside and I stuff my bags, keep the shape with little air pockets or if you don't have them, scarves, tops, socks, anything else. But I would recommend anybody to get a little organizer. I've links for Zumoni. I don't make anything off these links down off the Zumoni ones down below. There's other ones you can get on the market as well. Mine are all Zumoni. I love them. It also protects the interior of the bag from spillages like lip glosses, pens, whatever else you might have in there. And it just protects the lining. Like I've used this bag and like to look at it you'd actually think it was brand new just gonna show you now inside you go she is just a little stunner and that's great again if you want to either pass her on resell her or anything else I would recommend those inserts plus sprays for your bags if you're worried about transfer color transfer I would spray my bag I'll link a few products down below also a leather cleaner doesn't go astray every now and again you could use a leather cleaner just to give her a wipe and a shine storage as in the dust bag I keep mine out of the dust bag because I like leather to breathe some people like to store it in the dust bag that's pretty much up to yourself when I travel I would put them into dust bags so they don't get scratched and things like that. Also, I store mine in a dark room where they're not getting too much sunlight so they're not going to fade. So you're after spending all this money on your bag, you might as well just store the bag properly and love her and she will last forever and ever and ever and keep her in really nice condition. Now, the next one I would like to say is, and this is kind of a general across the board in life, do not settle, ever. Don't settle. And I brought this baby out because I did settle. And you know, you learn from your mistakes. Well, you hope you do. So I got this one and I, this is the bag I wanted from the start. Everybody knows my love for the Pochette Matisse. I think it mainly it's as well because of how hard it was for me to get this beauty. So I couldn't get her. I was at the time where, my God, she was high demand. Everybody was looking for this bag. So I settled for the Locky BB, which I'm sure a lot of you remember. Beautiful, beautiful bag. And I sold it since to one of my subscribers. I hope you're enjoying it, hon. She is a dope. She has a really beautiful bag, actually. But this was the one I wanted originally. So when I got my hands on this one, I then sold my Lucky BB because I wasn't using it as much and I held on to this one. So have the patience, wait. Maybe it's like easier to get a certain bag, so you go for that. But you know what? Itch is never scratched. It really isn't. You're still gonna want this one. You're still gonna long for her. It doesn't go in away. It's like that old boyfriend, really. You know, you still long for the boyfriend. Look at that, my hair's falling down. Isn't that lovely? So I would just say, yes, just do not settle. As I said, maybe, you know, you want a mini Chanel rectangle and you settle for the wallet on chain because it's easier or cheaper. I would say wait because I really do think you're still going to want that bag at the end of the day. You're just better off. Delayed gratification. It works all the time. Just wait. You can see how much I love that bag now. That's my little, you know, two pence worth. The next one is just be very, very, very conscious of the weight of your bag. Again, some bags haven't worked out for me because I thought they were beautiful. I bought them, they were stunning. And then I realized, oh, that's too heavy. When you fill it up, 
it's a completely different ball game. I now allow like an easier lifestyle where, you know, I don't need to carry as much things. Again, functionality, practicality come into it for my lifestyle. So I either sold the bag or returned, I didn't, I didn't return any bags actually, I don't think. No, I sold it on probably my Neo Noe. Like it wasn't heavy, but when you put stuff in, but again, I didn't need a bigger bag. And again, that's gone to one of my lovely subscribers, Ina, I hope you're enjoying it, love. And yes, so I would just say, consider the weight of the bag. It is important, it's very different between using your bag, looking at it, seeing how beautiful it is, and then, as I said, the practicality of everyday life. It really is, and ask any YouTuber on here, we've learned from our mistakes, and most of the girls will say the same thing. It's even a good exercise to fill up the bag, see how you feel, if you're gonna carry it around all day, is that what you're gonna be doing with it? Because you don't wanna be kinda of lugged down, you know, with your bag. So it's an important one to note. And last but not least, my dear ladies and, and friends and boys, if you're out there, do not get caught up in the hype. Yeah, that's a good one, isn't it? We all get caught up in the hype. <laughs> Don't buy the bag because it's all over social media because that girl over there has it and the other one over there has it and everybody else has it and now I want it. Because first of all, they're at a very different place in their life to you. They are at a different stage in their buying process. They could have 20 handbags, so this handbag is just another handbag. Yours could be your very first. So just think of those things, even though we all kind of go, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I love it. Because in six months, it mightn't be trendy anymore. The color mightn't be in, it mightn't suit you, it mightn't suit your lifestyle. So just take that into consideration that this hype bag that is everywhere at the moment, everybody has it. Just wait for five, six months and see where it is then. I prefer myself the more classic pieces. I like a little trend piece, but I mightn't pay as much money for a trend piece. That's generally what I like to do, and I think it's a kind of a smart move. It's what works for me. Might, you know, something else might work for you. So that's it, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you got some takeaways from it. And also, if you'd like to treat yourselves to some beautiful pieces of jewelry, use my link down below and the code and I hope you enjoy it because it's just absolutely stunning. Thank you to Adil again. And until next time, my friends, be kind, be safe, be compassionate. Love you lots. Mwah.